What is up, YouTube? It is Metro Game 75 here today to play Sakura Succubus 9. And we are back after like eight months. Like the eighth one, the eighth one came out like back in January this year, and here we go with the ninth one. We are so back. Let's get into this. Yeah, we are so back, yo. This is epic. Ah, Hiroki, this dude. Here we go. Ah, now this is the life. I sigh contently as I relax in my bedroom sprawl on my futon. There's a couple of cans of beers lying next to me, and I have some of my favorite snacks to hand. Salted squid strips and ginger potato chips. I know ginger potato chips might sound kind of weird, but they're actually pretty good. I guess they're a bit of a, an acquired taste. I try not to eat them when I'm at work because I know my coworkers can't stand the smell of the rustling of the bag. I'm practically a persona non grata at work already without making myself even more unpopular by eating smelly foods in the office. As for why I'm so unpopular at work, well, I don't know if I want to go into that right now, not even in the confines of my own head. Well, we already know exactly why this dude's unpopular. If you guys are watching the series, you understand why. I don't want to think about work at all. It's too depressing. For the moment, I'd like to just relax. My life's been so busy lately, I think I need a bit of quality, quality me time. I might make for a pretty sad picture, some guy in his late 20s sitting at home alone on a Friday evening chowing down on the questionable snacks bought from the convenience store, but I'm more popular than appearance would have you believe. As, I, as it happens, I've just so happened to occur a harem of Dory sucked me over the last year. Well, we're going to get a new one now. I first ran into a IQ Ayu, the, the famous idol Gark, and Pink, who currently standing at the very top of Japan's entertainment industry. Then I met Wakasuki Marina, the renowned businesswoman, and Cosmos Moretti, the social media star who made a name of herself by wearing all sorts of strange outfits. <laughs> And I met Yamamoto Hifumi not long after, an actress so I both love. Even my own father is a huge fan, and Hazel Williams, an upcoming tennis star with a string of victories under her belt. I'm not gonna hold you. Marina got some huge racks, y'all. <laughs> she got some huge racks. Yui then introduced herself to me, the princess of the Succubi realm, Succubus realm. And after her came. Well. I've met so many women during the last year, I'm thinking about it is enough to make me feel lightheaded. I love my succubus co companions and I like to think they love me in return, although some of them are more affectionate than others. But trying to satisfy the needs of so many women can get pretty exhausting, especially when some of them are so energetic like Hazel or so aggressive like Ayu. Sometimes I, I think even Casanova needed time to himself. I flick through the channels on the TV idly, searching for something which won't demand too much brain power when... Wait, Casanova? Why oh, would you look at that? Welcome onto the show, Miss IQ Ayu. Let's all give her a big round of applause, everybody. Woohoo, Ayu, Ayu. I love you, Ayu. You'll always be my favorite idol. I have a framed photograph of you on my bedroom. Well, wall, Ayu. So you're the first thing I see when I wake up every morning. <laughs> Yo, screw that guy. I have your face tattooed onto my arm. So when I look down, I can always see you. <laughs> you're the best, are you? I'm not done any of these crazy things, but I still really, really, really love you, are you? Huh? Looks like I stumbled upon some late night talk show. And as luck would have it, are you? One of the guests. Speak of the devil, I guess. I was trying to avoid thinking about my harem, but maybe that was foolish of me. My harem's gotten so big and it compasses so many talents, it's inevitable that my harem will eventually find its way to me in one way or another. It's a little tired. It's not just tiring, I mean, it's reassuring. As much as I appreciate me, my me time, it is nice to know the members of my harem are never too far away. I always like knowing how they've been doing, even if I'm not speaking to them directly. That being the case, I might as well keep watching this show. 
I am interested in what Aya's been doing. Let's see. What's she got right now? Oh my, thank you so much, everybody. I'm very, very happy to receive so such a warm reception. <laughs> I don't know if I'm worthy of your kindness, but I still do my best to measure up to your lofty expectations. I hope I don't let you down. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, she's always been getting pissed off little by little, like, all the time. Aya might be acting all sweet and innocent, but I know what she's really like. When the camera stops rolling and she's out of the spotlight, Ayu say some pretty cutting things about her fans. I don't think she's particularly grateful to them. In fact, she actually seems to disdain them. It's pers it's a personally personality quirk. I think she needs to work on. But Ayu's so good at hiding her disdain, her fans haven't realized how two-faced she is. Her mask is so good, in fact, even I'm starting to wonder whether Aku Ayu might have been the kindest, humblest, most considerate idol out there. That smile for her sure is something. I feel like it's purifying me. Wow, what a charmer you are, Miss Aku. I'd expect nothing less from an idol of your caliber, but you were but the way you're working the crowd sure is something. Listen to their cheers. It's obvious that they adore you. Well, naturally, I'm doing everything in my power to be worthy of their adoration. Though I can't deny, I do worry I won't be able to measure up to my fans' expectations. Having so many eyeballs trained on me is a bit hard. But I'm going to keep doing my best. I'm sure you will. You always do. That's why you're so beloved by so many people. But you aren't the only idol who's managed to build a dedicated fanbase over the years. As it happens, we have another woman on the show with us tonight who's just as beloved, if not more so, than you are. Now, would everybody in the audience put their hands together for the one and the only Mihama Shizuru? Huh? I frown bemused as, as an attractive brunette appears on the screen. She waves at the audience a small smile on her face, nearly made up face, then takes a seat on the couch alongside Ayu. What the? We got another MILF! That's number two! The woman adjusts the hem of her skirt, which is rather long, and smiles at the camera. The woman's face is soft and hard as shaped, her eyes like almonds. She's well proportioned with slender arms and a large bust, but she doesn't necessarily exclude sex appeal. She looks refined more than she does ravishing, though that isn't to say that she's not good looking. She's definitely beautiful, I just don't know if she's very sexy. As for how old she is, I can't quite tell. Her skin is smooth which is further accentuated by makeup, but I think I can see the faintest suggestion of crows beneath her eyes. If nothing else, it, it appears she's a fair bit older than Ayu. I think she might be older than me too. Is she in her 30s? Maybe her mid 30s? Well, the presence presenter did announce her as Mihama Shizuru, wouldn't that make her that popular idol who rose to prom prominence almost 20 years ago? I'm not clued up on Idol Lord, but I know Shizuru's been retired for over a decade. That must make her quite a bit older than the other idols who are currently active in the industry, Ayu included, so pretty much she stopped like around that age like 20 or so. Hmm. I guess as far as idols go, she's a veteran. I do wonder why she's on this talk show though. What's going on? I know that she's released a new CD fairly recently after a long time away from the spotlight, much to Ayu's chagrin. She's been complaining about it quite a bit these last few months. Ayu's told me some things about Shizuru more like Ayu's rant to me at the great length about Shizuru, and she kept calling her a saggy old witch or variants of it. I mustn't have an expected after being subjected to so much of Ayu's betrayal that Shizuru would look quite so, well, nice. It goes to show that I can't really listen to Ayu, especially not when her competitors are involved. Her opinions might be a little bit biased. Now I wonder what I think about Shizuru. I mean, she's pretty, that's one. But I can't deny she's attractive. I do have eyes after all. I'm not blind. I'm sorry, Ayu, but... Your rival is really is attractive. 
I hope you can forgive me for commenting, committing this much grave of sins. Greetings, Miss Mihama. It's a pleasure, as always, to have you on the show. Oh no, the pleasure is all mine, really. And you don't need to call me Miss Mihama. That sounds much too formal. Shizuru is fine. <laughs> well, how about that? I feel like I'm green. I'm getting up real close and impersonal with Miss Hama. Sorry, Shizuru here. What did I do to deserve such special treatment from such a gorgeous lady? Have I died and gone to heaven? I would hope not. You still have so much left to give to the world. Your show has helped so many up and coming t upcoming talents and finding their footing. It would be true blow to the entertainment industry if you did pass away. Ha! Well, we've all gotta go sometime. But if you keep talking to me like that, I might wind up knocking up, knocking on the pearly gates faster than expected. You're being so sweet. I'm afraid my heart can't handle the strain. Oh dear, my apologies. I wasn't aware my words could have such an impact. Would you prefer if I was a nasty to you instead? <laughs> yo! Yo! If you were nasty to me, that turned this into a whole different kind of show. And as tender as I am to see you wa your wild side, I don't know if my wife would appreciate it. <laughs> I wasn't planning to do anything too untoward. But I don't want to cause Miss Enomaki any cause of concern. She's a very nice woman. And she just... It's why I married her. I might have been presenting this show for nigh on 30 years, and I've seen a whole load of pretty women in my time, but none of them can compare to my wife. She's amazing. And did your wife tell you to say that by any chance? <laughs> the presenter gloffs at this, then slaps his thigh with one hand. Don't tell everybody that, are you? You'll spoil the magic. I'm supposed to be a family man. I think you are quite wonderful, really. You always enjoy the appearance appearing on your show. When I first broke into the industry, it didn't truly hit me just how far I had come until I was able to speak to you. I watched you on TV when I was younger, and I dream of sitting on one of the, these couches. It really did feel as though I had finally made it. <laughs> well, it's nice to know you think I'm a barometer of success and not the adoration and respect of your hundreds of thousands of fans. Speaking of which, Zoro so looked look to the audience, smiling with his whining smile, which must be the result of extensive de dental work. Can we get a round of applause for Shizuru here? She deserves it just as much as Ayu. As the presenter's insistence, a swell of cheers fills up the air. I can't tell if Shizuru is getting more applause than Ayu, but her fans look equally as enamored. I guess she's were still a pretty big deal despite the long gap in her career. I'm starting to wonder, behind her placid facade, whether she might be a formidable idol after all? Is that why Ayu is so worried for her? Shizuru's banter is even more, even smoother than butter, and her smile is, is unwavering. She looks completely in her element. Well, well, would you look at that? You would have you been away from the industry for over a decade, but you still have people going crazy about you. If that doesn't prove you're the best of the best, I don't know what does. I don't know if that says much of anything about me, Percy, though I think it does suggest that my fans are the best of the best. Thank you so much for continuing to support me all these years. It's been over 15 years since I last appeared on this show, but when I sit here tonight, it feels as though... No time has passed at all between then and now. Why I could always be a teenager again. Another wave of applause fills the air as Shizu's words. There are more whoops and even more cheers. It sounds like the crowd's getting pretty worked up. They're practically eating out of the palm of Shizu's neatly manicured hand. She's no she sure knows how to play her audience. Not I suppose that I that's too surprising. Shizu does have a lot of experience. I think she had a pretty long run at being an idol before she retired in the first place. Didn't she release like seven full-length CDs? A lot of them were hits too. I remember hearing fireworks about a million times during that long, lazy summer between my transition from elementary to middle school. Why? You still look like a teenager. Where I'm sitting, Shizuru. It might have been 15 years, but you've barely aged at all. Are you sure you're not a vampire? Yeah, yo, yo, this presenter is something. What is bro trying to get at her as much as he can? I wasn't the last, the last time I checked. 
But if you want to test that, I could always bite you. <laughs> the presenter laughs unpriorously, as does the crowd. It's a tempting offer, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass. I've got to remember them wife, you know. <laughs> what a gentleman you are. She must be so thrilled to have married you. Oh, I'm sure she will be livid right now seeing me in the company of two beautiful women like yourself. But what can I say? That's showbiz. The presenter chuckles, then looks between Ayu and Shizuru. Speaking of the show business, I didn't invite you onto this show so we could flirt awkwardly with one another in front of a live studio audience, Shizuru. You actually have an announcement to make, isn't that right? Indeed it is. This might be rather sudden, but Shizuru looks at the audience. Serenely, she smiles, her expression calms and untroubled like still, like the still surface of a lake. Then, in a clear voice, she carries... She says, I am very pleased to announce that I will finally be going to on tour again, and this time I won't be alone. That's right. After some fingling and wool and a whole bunch of back and forth, my production company Shizuru and Shizuru's have decided to work together. That means for those of you who haven't seen the leaks on the net, all you pause for a dramatic effect. effect. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? <laughs> so she beams. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be putting on a joint tour, not just in Japan, but across all of Europe too. We'll start our first leg of the tour off in the story of then progress, progress to Germany, Spain, France, and England. Well, that's a familiar place that we've already been to, <laughs> the Storia. After that, we will head over, head on over to Japan, where we'll be performing in 30 different cities of across April. We'll be performing all of the songs from my newest album, plus the songs from Shizuru's latest album, and a bunch of our most beloved classics. It'll be a blast. You should all come and watch us if you can. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. I don't know how you feel, people in the audience, or you, people sitting at home glued to your TV screens, but I know how I feel. And I think this will be this will be the concert of a lifetime. You won't want to miss this, I promise. I simply can't wait. Well, even at a start, that's new. So you don't see for like a series like this where they have something like this in the text. Hmm. That's actually pretty new. Sometimes later... Uh-oh, well, she's angry, you see this? <laughs> this is what we're talking about, yo. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this at all. This is going to be dreadful. I just know it. What a pain in the ass. A scowling Ayu sitting beside me, her arms folded res resolutely across her chest. She doesn't look very happy, which is something of a running theme with Ayu and it's definitely been running theme this morning. The two of us are sitting in the airport lobby waiting for our flight to Astoria to arrive. And we have company. Cosmos, Ifumi, and Elise have also decided to come along for the ride. Ayu might be going to the store for her upcoming concert, but Hifumi is making the journey at Stefania's request. Hifumi has a bit of a break in her film schedule, and Stefania's been angry to see her Karuta mentor once more. I think at least has a photo shoot in the story lined up to show off some of Sayuri's newest pieces and as for Cosmos. Well, I'm not really sure why she's tagging along. Like, are you supposed to be doing some tennising at this point? Like, like, why are you coming with us? Maybe she's just in it for the vibes? I'm here meanwhile because I was sent out here by my boss. He wants me to attend Ayushu's concert, which is being described as a once in a lifetime spectacle and snap some photos. I'm not actually traveling as Ayushu's plus one. I have work to do. I think I'll have my work cut out for me. Though, trying to manage Ayu's mood, her expression is thunderous. I can't believe I have to perform with Shizuru, of all people. What was my production company thinking? It's bad enough that that saggy old witch decided to make a comeback when she should have bowed out gracefully years ago. But why should I have to share the stage with her? The stage isn't the hers, it's mine. It's Time for her to stand aside and let the new generation take over. Damn it! I thought Shizuru did stand aside and let the new generation take over, though. 
I know I don't know how much about Shizuru, but didn't you say she stopped being an idol almost 20 years ago? She did stop being an idol almost 20 years ago, and it should have stayed that way too. There was absolutely no reason for her to launch a comeback, especially not around the release of my latest album. So wait a minute, so that means she was she stopped 20 years ago, and she's like in her 30s, so she's like... She probably started when she was like, what, in elementary or close to middle school? It almost feels like she was trying to undermine me. It's like she's being all, oh, look at me. I'm an Asian crone, but I can still pull in numbers. My Jurassic fans all adore me, and with their support, I can even outshine IU IU. When I walk into a room, I can still make the whole place light up. I'm the real star. Me, me, me. That doesn't sound like a very charitable assessment. Are you sure that's what she's really would be thinking and not what you're... Oof. I guess as Ayu grinds her teeth heel against my foot hard. Ow. Wait, it said food. What the heck? Hey, Ayu, what, was that really necessary? It was about as necessary as all of your pithy remarks, mister. Uh, this will be awful. I was already pissed at Shizuru upstaging for me with her little comeback, but having to actually share a stage with her? It's just humiliating. Humiliating? At least pipes up quietly, her head tilted to one side. At least it's just as soft-spoken as always, but I think her confidence has had something of a booster boost ever since she started to work as a model. Now that you come to think about her least, now I see exactly. I literally thought it was Hazel for a moment. How do I mistake her for Hazel? That's crazy. I mean, at least she can come with us. She ain't gonna be useless. At least there's something she can do this time. She can actually articulate her thoughts now if she doesn't always hide behind my back. She still stammers, of course. That's an Elise quirk, which I will ever change. And she goes red incredibly easily but she's trying to start more conversations on her own. For that, I'm proud of her. She really is doing her best. Though I do worry that trying to talk to Ayu when she's in one of her moods might be a poor idea. Ayu isn't a very personal bull at best of times, and this is the worst of times. I don't see why performing with Miss Mihamish Wood should be humiliating. I don't know very much about idols myself, but she was very popular back in the in the day. Shouldn't you be flattered to perform alongside such a legend? I know I would be. What do you mean, flattered? There's nothing flattering about this situation. It's almost like my production company are saying, Hey Ayu, you're not excited enough to pull big crowds on your own anymore, so we want to team up with this has been to mooch off her elderly fan base. Do you really think that I'd be alright with that? I suppose not, but well, there you go. I'm not alright with it. I'm very, very, very not alright with it. I don't want people thinking I can fill a stadium on my own. Leeching off of somebody else's popularity is already embarrassing, but doing it with a person like Shizuru? I don't think I, I, my pride will ever recover. Grr. I introduce her index finger to her mouth, then she bites down on her nail. Her violent eyes flashing. I can't believe you would even suggest that I should be flattered, Elise. What the hell is wrong with you? You're insane. Ah, I'm sorry. I was just trying to cheer you up, but I guess my intervention wasn't wanted. Just stupid, ignorant, succubus who doesn't really know what she's talking about. That man's stupid as a pigeon. No, stupider. My IQ is lower than a cardboard box. Okay, that's a what? A card? Bro! I'm so dumb I should just give up on living as a human and become a yak in, in the Himalayas. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I, I should really just search that up, probably. Hey, hey, don't talk down to yourself like that, Ali. I think you have a lot of good qualities. You do? Yes, you're, um, uh, well... You're not exactly confident, and you're no good at cheering people up either. <laughs> that, that's no way to put it. Come on. That is no way to put it. <laughs> it's not even helping up the situation. What the heck? <laughs> this is not even helping. Come on, Cosmos. You always look awkward when you smile, and you tend to say exactly the wrong things to people. Oh my god, that's not helping. What the heck? 
You can't cook, you have no practical skill, and you're so cluz cluz me. So you're always tip tripping over your own feet. But at least you have good taste in anime. Well, okay, that's that's one good thing right there, but you don't have to go all that route to say all that. Like you, you just don't have to do that. Like, come on. That means you're not completely useless. Cosmos. At least looks like Cosmos, her eyes damp. She blinks. Then, not wholly to my surprise, she begins to sob again. Wow, you're right. I have nothing going for me whatsoever. I really am a waste of space. Wow, good job cheering her up, Cosmos. With people skills like that, it really is a wonder why you don't become a polit politician. Have you tried running for office? Do you really think I can get in? Um, no. Just look at yourself. Nobody would want to be represented by a weird girl who likes to LARP as being a cat, especially not a, not a weird girl who likes to LARP as being a cat who smashes eggs over herself on camera for her fans. You have no chance. My, my. Ifumi smiles at me, one hand pressed to her mouth. We certainly have love lively buds of assemble on for our upcoming trip, don't we? We, sh we sure do. I definitely can't deny that. Though whether this is a good thing or not remains to be seen. At least it's still waiting while I was laying into Cosmos. These Sakubi might be grown women ostensibly, but I'm starting to feel like a kindergarten teacher taking their children, taking their kids out for a trip. He fools the only halfway sensible person here. The last time I went to Astoria, I was in the company of Marina, Hifumi, and Hazel. Both Marina and Hifumi are pretty mature, while Hazel isn't the most reliable person. She's very easygoing. That was quite a relaxing trip, thanks to my companions. This trip, however, should be a lot more lively to borrow Hifumi's turn of phrase. Ayu has a hair trigger temper, Cosmos is an airhead, space cadet, and Elise is. I'm so useless. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I even come here? I'm sure I'll just spoil everything. Well, Elise is Elise. Or just chill, I, I suppose. Can I really deal with these girls for an entire trip? I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if I want to find out either. This is all starting to seem like a recipe for unmitigated disaster. I just hope everything will be alright. Man, it's like, it is like children you gotta take care of. Like, all of them. And the way how they're all acting? Sometimes later? Excuse me, um, Hiroki. Yes, is something wrong? Oh, um, I was just wondering. Elise and I are still sitting in the airport waiting for our flight to board. We have about another half hour till then. Time of that I've been trying to kill by scrolling through my phone. Cosmo and Ayu meanwhile are being unusual quiet unusually quiet. Ayu hasn't hurled any insults at Cosmos for a hot minute. She's not said so much as a peep. Actually, after exploding at Elise earlier, it looks like she and Cosmos are both listening to music. Cosmos music, in all likelihood, since they're sharing a pair of headphones that are plugged plug into Cosmos' phone. I don't know what sort of music Cosmos is into, but it, surprisingly enough, doesn't seem to be offending Ayu's sensibilities. She isn't scowling, which is a rarity for her, though she isn't exactly smiling either. Her expression is a bit hard to read. I guess I'll take that as a positive. He flew me for her part. He's flipping through the book. It looks like a historical romance novel set in the Edo period between a common serving girl and a samurai. I guess it makes sense that if we would like novels like that, she's starred in so many romance movies herself. I know she's a huge fan of sappy love stories. Elise, meanwhile, was leafing through a fashion magazine, but she's since set it down. I think that something bothered her because she looks at me shyly and mumbles. I was just wondering, um, I have not been to a story before, so I have no idea what it's like. I'm a little worried that I won't fit in, but I'm even more worried that the princess might hold a grudge against me. The princess? <sighs> I frown. I'm so accustomed to calling Stefania. It's well, Stefania, that's Ali's use of her title initially throws me for a loop. For some reason, I find it hard to place the finest name to the loft moniker of Princess. Maybe that's because Stefania is so kind, humble, and down-to-earth. She really doesn't act like you come, you expect 
A monarch to act. She's not spoiled in the slightest. She's a nice girl through and through. Which makes it easy for me to reassure Alice. Oh, if you meet Steffi, then you don't have to worry about that. I'm sure she'll have forgiven you. Are you sure? Alice looks at me mistrustfully. I did kidnap her, and I tied her to the chair. That can't be very much fun for her. I'm sure it wasn't, but you didn't threaten her, did you? No, I didn't. Not even I would stoop that far. I didn't even inflict any harm on her either. Um, beyond tr tying her up, I think I might have tied the ropes a bit too tightly, but I didn't use any of my magic on her beyond the magic I use when I knock her out, of course. I didn't want to hurt her. Then it should be fine. I doubt the find it will hold a grudge. Really, I think most people would hold a grudge after that. It's common sense. Maybe most people would, but Stefani isn't most people. No, she isn't. She's a princess. I kidnapped somebody incredibly important. Hiroki, at least turns, at least face turns ashen. What if my photo, what if my, what if my supposed photo shoot with Sayuri was all a huge trick devised at by Astoria's government? What if I get thrown into prison the moment I arrive in the country or worse? What if I get executed? What? <laughs> what is she even on? I doubt that'll happen. Capital punishment is illegal in Astoria. Yes, but what if they make an exception for me? I mean, I did commit a pretty huge crime against a member of the royal family. If execution is going too far, then that has to be worth at least a few a few pullouts, fingernails, and the gouge eyes, right? Well, the princess invited us to stay at her palace, Hiroki. Of course it'll have a dungeon. I wouldn't be surprised if it was has a tortured chamber too. I don't want to get shoved into an Iron Maiden. The band is fine, but I don't really don't want to be brutally tortured. Elise, please. I take Elise's shoulders in my hands, which are quaking, and try to placate her. I didn't do a thorough sweep of the Storia's palace when I was there the last time, but I doubt they have a torture chamber. This is the 21st century. You're worrying too much about nothing. Now try to relax and take a deep breath. That's easier said than done. All of a sudden, I feel like I can't breathe at all. I know, but you're working yourself up into a state. Stefania is a nice person. This isn't some great re ruse or evil plot. If she asks you to stay with her in the palace, it must be because she wants to get to know you better. I doubt this is some sneaky underhanded attempt to end your life, so please relax. Everything will be fine. It will? I'm sure it will. At least bites her lower lip worriedly. She, she hangs her head at expressions morose and murmurs. I'm not so sure about that, but all right. I'll try to be positive, though I can't promise her very much. I've never been very good at that. Believe me, I'm aware. I know your thoughts get the better of you sometimes, but I really do think you're worrying for nothing. Stefania is a really nice girl, you'll see. I'm sure she'll get on wonderfully. I find it hard to get along with everybody, anybody averagely let alone wonderfully, but I'll hope for the best. I don't want to spoil this holiday for the rest of you, so I'll try to stay cheery. I really will do my best, but... But, there's one more thing I, I was worried about. Um, at least press her index finger together at her front. She looks up at me, her brows furrow with distress. Then in a soft voice, she, which she wavers, she says, Hiroki, what will we do if, if the plane crashes? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> Yo. What? <laughs> Dude. I mean, come on. I mean, surely enough it wouldn't crash. Like, well, let's hope not. <laughs> That's crazy. She just worries so much about the wrong things. Well, I mean, damn. Despite Ayu's protracted grumbling and Elisa's ever-present anxiety, a 30-some hour flight to Asori passes with relatively little offense. The flight isn't comfortable, but flights rarely are. Though I'm, about, I'm able to travel in style with my party, thanks to Ayu's connections and excessive wealth, there still isn't enough room for me to comfortably stretch my legs out. I guess this is one of the, one of the curses of being tall. I know a lot of short guys resent us taller men for our extra added height, 
They seem to think it gives us a natural edge over our competition, especially when it comes to wooing women. Damn. You know, speaking of which, you know, thinking about this text right here, it just reminds me of that time when this dude really wanted this woman, but he's 6'3", but now the lady wants 6'5". I'm like, damn, she just wants a whole, like, building or skyscraper at this point? Like, sheesh. But anyways, I thought, I've always thought I could do with being a few inches shorter myself. However, I had my school's basketball team on my back constantly when I was a student trying to recruit me, though my interest in sports has always been nil. I only care about sports when my boss sends me out to photograph important matches, and even then, I have a hard time keeping track of what's going on. I'm only in it for the money. Being tall is more of a curse than being a bless, really, especially on the public transport. But my poor legs aside, I arrive in Sawyer's airport <laughs> with little incident. I retrieve my luggage from the carousel, relieved to find that everything as it should be. Then I step outside the airport, a smiley cosmos, a sighing Ayu, a serene Hifumi, and shaking Ali's in tow, and I'm soon greeted by a familiar pair of faces. Uh oh, are we all here? It's the same photo from like, what, Psycho Succubus? Like six or seven? Naroki, it's so very good to see you again. And everybody else too, of course. I miss you, teacher. I've been very much looking forward to, to having another recruiter match with you. How flattering. I am very glad to hear it. But we've been through this before, dear Safadia. You don't need to call me teacher. I think that sounds much too stiff and formal, and it makes me feel rather old too. Kifumi will do just fine. I concur, you are a princess, lady, even if Miss Yamamoto is a skilled Karuta player. You should not feel obliged to prostrate yourself before her. Oh, but that's the thing, Lizzie. I do feel obliged. My teacher is incredibly after all. I don't think there's any better career player to teach. Sorry, I mean Hifumi. Not in all of the world. You're too kind. I am not un I'm not uniquely skilled at the game, but it is gratifying to hear you say so. Of course I'll say so. It is the truth after all. I would like to start playing more games for you right away. But where are my manners? Stefania turns her attention to Ayu Cosmo and her face flush. It is good to see you both too. You too, it is a pleasure. Same sees Meowdy. Steffi, Lizzie, let's have fun. I'm sure that we will we'll, that we will have that we will. I'm more I'm having fun already just talking to you. It's so nice to spend some time with some girls my own age. I don't dislike living in the palace, but it can be somewhat stiffly. I've been rather looking forward to seeing you all. Sephira looks between us softly smiling. Her Green eyes then lock onto Alice, who, as might be predicted, squeaks and tries to hide behind my back. Uh oh. I think she's still worried that Stefania might take her to the task over her attempt at kidnapping, but I know Stefania is better than Alice does. I spent more time with the Astoria's pop princess, and her greeting doesn't come as shock in the slightest. And of course, you're included when I say I wanted to see you, all of all of you. It's lovely to see you too, Elise. I've not had a chance to speak with you as much as I have the others, but that's all right. That means I can take this opportunity to better get to know you. Oh, I really am looking forward to this. I cannot wait to take you all back to the palace. Huh? Elise appears at Stefania from behind my shoulders, quivering all the while. She blinks, then in a quiet and self effacing sort of voice she says do you really not mind me being here then why should i mind i'm the one who invited you here it should would be silly of me to extend you an invite to the royal prayer palace if, you, if i did not mean to uphold my word i am sure we will have a lot to discuss though i am most looking forward to playing more games of karuta with you teach um if me <laughs> if it wouldn't be too much of an of an imposition of course Oh, Stefania. Ifumi smiles at Stefania indulgently, her expression soft and gentle. For a few moments, she observes Astoria's princess, her eyes warm like flickering firelights. Then she takes a step forward. Ifumi extends a hand, she sleeves of her kimono fluttering 
And Daluku's pouting on the left. Oh. Hmm? And to Stefani's surprise, she rests her palm on top of Stefani's head and gives her blonde tressel tresses of ruffle. She is pouting. Oh, look at Ayu pout. She's still pouting herself. She really wants that head pad too. Try not to fear, Stefania. I know that it's easier said than done, given it is human nature to worry. But you aren't in an position upon me. You couldn't be, even if you tried. Oh, are you sure about that? Lizzie would never say so, because she is my maid. But I worry I could be better. I could be rather demanding at times. You mean demand? You demanding? Elizabeth shakes her head. Don't be silly, milady. You are an absolute pleasure to serve, and I am not saying that because your parents have employed me to do so. I would still wish to care for you even if I had no financial incentive to do so. Being with you is a pleasure. Your sweet smile could thaw out the ice in any heart, no matter how hard. You, And you always put others above yourself, despite your royal status. I believe it is impossible to not be charmed by you, and I am sure that Miss Yamoto agrees. Why, yes, you've rather taken the words out of my mouth. There is little else for me to say after that rousing speech, but rest assured, Elizabeth is correct. I am not tired of you, Stefania. That could never come to pass. You are simply too precious. If we smile gently, still stroking Stefania's hair, and I am glad to see you are doing so well. Oh, um, well, um, Stefania flushes. I am quite all right, as you can see. I was a bit sad, admittedly, when I had to return to Astoria after my trip to Japan, and I couldn't see you anymore. I miss all of you, and especially miss you too, Hiroki. It was rather lonely, but I kept myself busy. I knew that you wouldn't like it if I was moping around the palace on my own, Hiroki, being sad, so I tried to work through my sorrow. I knew that I would see you all again tomorrow, again eventually. And now that you're here, I can hardly contain my happiness. Stefania's smile is luminous. It's so bright, looking at it is making my eyes hurt. And I'm not the only one who overwhelmed by her sunny disposition. Elise is still shrinking behind me, muttering something like, It burns! She seems to do that a lot, actually. I hope she doesn't have skin condition. Ayu, meanwhile, is scowling. She glows at Hifumi, who's still petting Stefania on the head, and says, I'm surprised that maid of Stefania is letting you do that, especially given we're out in, the, in public. Surely it can be, can't be good for Stefania's image being treated like an infant outdoors. If it weren't anybody other than Miss Yamamoto touching Milady's dust, I would agree with you. But Miss Yamamoto is, is a kind, gentlewoman, I know she would never do anything to hurt my lady, and there is no shame in letting her express her affections. Uh, Miss Yamamoto's aura is so dignified, nobody could observe this scene and take it to be anything untoward. Oh, you'll be surprised what people are capable of. Some of my fans are really weird. Mine too. I had no idea people wrote stories about me until a few days ago, when one of my fans sent me one of their own works on A13, it, it was a really strange story about me, and, uh, well, it was, I was actually with you, Ayu. Me? Yes, it started off pretty tame. We were just going to some con together, and we were staying at the same hotel, but where it was, but there was only one room and only one bed, but by the end, we were doing all sort of weird stuff. Weird stuff, huh? I frown. That sounds kind of hot <laughs> Yo, pretty familiar <laughs> pretty bland are you marina no that's like a mother going after their child come to think of this one yeah, let's see <laughs> i thought you'd be interested i knew you were a man of culture Hiroki. If you're interested, I can pull this fic up for you, along with all of the other classic Ayu fics I found. There's some really, really good ones out there. I like the ones where she uses her feet, and the most, but the ones where she uses her hair are. Never mind that. 
Ayu turns back on Cosmos, her arms folded. She turns her back so breathlessly, one of her pigtails slaps Cosmos in the face. In any, in any case, you really shouldn't be patting Princess like that, Hifuman. It isn't becoming... You're going to make a scene! Now, that is quite the curious objection. I think that you, you're at risk of making a bigger scene, Ayu, based on the way you keep carrying on. Why? If I did not know any better, I would have to wonder whether you aren't jealous of the attention I am bestowing upon Stefania. Huh? Ayu gapes at Hifumi, her mouth a go. I'm not jealous. Not one bit. It's not like I'm upset that you're getting all up close and personal with Stefania. I really couldn't care less. Traitorious. Which, so there. Ayu scowls in a manner that makes it rather apparent that she does care. So, there! And grabs a hold of Cosmos' hand. Come on, Cosmos, let's go. I've had enough of this. Miss Perfect over there is making me want to barf. <laughs> She's just jealous. It's crazy. It doesn't take long for my retune to arrive at Astoria's palace, where whisk away to the royal palace in style. But once the final chauffeurs, the journey takes a little more than an hour, and we arrive there quickly. The palace, as always, takes my breath away when I see its exterior. It's a vast, extravagant building, though it isn't at all tasteless or gaudy. Though it is obvious a good deal of money was lavished upon the construction of Historia's palace, it is rather refined. There are no unnecessary arches, no spires, and neither are there any ugly stone gargoyles affixed to the exterior of the building. As far as royal palaces go, it is positively humble. Not that I know that much about royal palaces. Other than the Storia's palace, I've only been to one of her other palaces in my lifetime. That being the palace in the Succubus realm where Yui lives. I don't think that palace is indicative of most places, palaces, given it look like a demon lord's fortress from an RPG. Elizabeth takes our bags once we enter the palace alongside a handful of other ladies, all of them sensibly dressed and smartly spoken. They assure us that they will take good care of our luggage, then depart leaving us standing in the entrance hall. I feel a little gormless, like a goldfish, unsure of what to do or where to go, which must have finally claps her hands. Alright, I'm sure you are all tired after your long journey, but it is not so very late. As such, I think you ought to have something to eat before you go to bed. It should be about dinner time. And I think a nice hearty, hearty meal in the palace will be far superior to whatever you might have been served on the plane. The final leads us to the dining hall, then faces us with a weary smile. I mean, no disrespect to Astoria air, but Stefania's voice drops to a further furtive whisper. The food they serve is abysmal. I was traveling first class when I went to see you in Japan, Hiroki, but the food was unpalatable. The chicken was bone dry and the chicken and the peas were like bullets. Everything tasted like cardboard. I'm not a particular picky eater, but I could barely stand it. You wouldn't be the only one. I am no princess, but even with my compar comparatively unrefined tastes, I am no fan of airplane food. If there is anything more unappetizing than it, it is hospital food. I consider myself unfortunate that we do not have to eat in the hospital canteen while filming our current medical drama. It's, it is fortunate though. Oh yes, are you working on medical drama, aren't you? I've been watching it, it really is very good. The last episode was so emotional it made me get all stiffy. Slizzy was worried I might be coming down with a cold so, she prepared two hot water bottles for me to take to bed. She didn't realize I was sniffling because of what had happened to the nurse, Aihara. Oh, I had no idea you've been watching it. I didn't think they would air it in Storia. They don't. There's there isn't much of a demand for Japan, Japanese only dramas here, when the, most of the population speaks German. I was watching it only on the inter internet, actually. <laughs> She probably watched it on 9anime.com. <laughs> but rest in peace to that site, though. My, my, how very modern. I confess I am not very good with technology myself. 
I find myself using the internet to be rather baffling. The most I can manage is look it up the odd cat photos that Cosmo sometimes sends me. Oh, the internet not hard at all. I could give you some pointers if you want, hey Fumin. If you need somebody to help you set up a router or treasure or some files, I'm your girl. Would you mind giving me a hand? That would be appreciated. I was meaning to buy a new phone. My current one is rather dated. I'm unsure how to go about doing this, however. My modern cellular the phones are all so complicated. They have far too many features. They can be a lot to get your head around. Yeah. But don't worry, that's where I come in. I'm sure I'll be able to pick up a good phone for you, Hifuman. I'll make sure to get you something simple so it doesn't overwhelm you with unnecessary features. But having a good camera is a must. You're so pretty, I'm sure you want to take a lot of selfies. Do you really think Hifuman of all people would take selfies? She isn't like you, Cosmos. You we aren't all that self observed Do you think I'm really... Um, do you really think I'm self-obsessed? Well, you certainly spend a lot of time dressing up and looking at yourself in the viewfinder. That's all I'm to say. That's all I'll say on that matter. The girls fall to a conversation. Tifania and Hifuman about Hifuman's ongoing drama. I am Cosmos about Cosmos' supposed selfie addiction, but at least remains quiet. She looks. She's looking around at the dining room in Ai. Her eyes wide as a goose eggs. Hey, Alice, are you all right? Oh, yes. Alice starts. Her face flushes. Is she embarrassed at being caught out? I'm fine. I was just thinking, um, this place really is grand. I'm not sure if I'll be able to feel at home here. It's all a bit intimidating. <laughs> well, I totally get that. I thought this place was intimidating the first time I came here. And if I'm honest, I still find it intimidating. You do? Alice frowns. But you look at so at your ease. You're acting as though you're, you're used to this sort of thing. Well, I have been to this palace before. It's not quite as much of a shock to the second time. But believe me, I was a bit, I was everything a bit as out of my depth. When I first came here, I also felt incredibly out of the place. But I eventually, hmm, maybe I didn't get used to it exactly. But Safania made me feel very welcome. She's a nice person. Yes, you have mentioned that. At least cast a shy glance at the head of the table where Stefania sits. She's still talking to Hifumin, waving her hands excitedly as she talks, presumably about Hifumin's role in her current TV drama. She does seem very nice, but I'm still worried. Are you still afraid she's not holding the grudge? Why wouldn't she? I just deserve it. Maybe you do, with a lousy attitude like that. Stefania did invite you to the palace, though. I doubt she'd do that if she didn't want to, you here. Now buckle your ideas up, then stop being so mopey. You'll spoil dinner if you sit down around, looking all miserable. After the slop, they serve us the plane. On the plane, I want to enjoy my meal, thank you. Oh, right. At least links it to herself, her face flush. I'm sorry, I'll try to, I'll try to be more possessive. Positive, you can try. Though, knowing you, you'll probably fail. Still, I suppose I appreciate the effort. While I was talking, a small squadron maids enter the dining hall led by Elizabeth. Some of these maids are pushing trolley laden with food, while others are holding bottles and champagne and champagne glasses. The maids all set all our food drinks down before us, and as they do, Elise gaps. Wow, th this is amazing! What is amazing? I'm being served by all by real life maids. Of course, that's amazing. I'm starting to feel like a queen. This is really is lavish. I'm afraid I'm not worthy of all this attention, though. I'm nowhere near special enough for such service. I mean, I'm just Elise. Hmm. I'll use scoffles. She looks decidedly unimpressed. Why are you getting so worked up? Why wouldn't I be getting worked up? I thought it was. Incredible that Lady Stefania and Miss Elizabeth to dote on her, but I. Th but this play of palace is positively bustling with maids. A maid showed me to my seat, and a maid served my soup, and a maid handed my, me my napkin. There are so many maids, my heart, head is spinning. I've never been so well taken care of in all my my life. Well, I could 
easily tell, but I can easily believe that. But having maids is nothing special. It feels pretty nice, special to me though. Well, it would. You have no worldly experience whatsoever. You're so sheltered. But anybody with a bit of money can afford a maid or two. Is that so? At least frowns. I have quite a bit of a money for myself now after becoming a model, but I still don't think. But I still don't have a maid. I wouldn't know where to look for one, for one thing. And for another, it would be. It would feel a little awkward having somebody else look after me, even if I could pay uh, as a maid at a, an appropriate salary. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with letting somebody else do so much for me. I wouldn't want to be in in position, and I'm not sure if I really deserve that. Now what nonsense are you spouting? Your supposed worth has nothing to do with whether you can afford a mate or not. It is a purely transactional thing. You don't need to get so worked up about it. And you don't need to be so impressed either. Maids are just ordinary people who can clean up after you. They manage the laundry, the dusting, the sweeping. What's so special about that? Even if I could manage to touch that. Manage that much. Could you now? Elizabeth looks at Ayu coldly, her hands planted on her hips. Do you really truly believe that this that is all the maids are good for Miss Aku? Well, yes, isn't cleaning up after people what you get employed to do? I fail to see why that's so commendable about that or so very exciting. As far as your as jobs go, it sounds rather simple. Uh, any halfway competent person would be able to do it. I have to hire maids, however, as my schedule is so busy it doesn't allow for me to take care of my own housework. It's a convenient, but there's no reason for Elise to get so starey and I this is just further proof of how very ignorant she is. Am I ignorant? Ali's expressions falls. I've been trying to fit in, but I but I guess I've not been doing a good job of it. I should have known that's what that I look like a fool. No matter what I try to do, and I'm not so sure if I should be here at all. Not after everything I did to Stefania. Maybe I shouldn't have come here. I'm just going to drag the mood down. I'm such a dummy. Now, now. Stefania looks at Elise from across the table, her expressions gentle. Please do not be so very hard on yourself. Hearing you speak thus is making me feel rather somber. As a guest, I would much prefer it if you could enjoy yourself. You. Yes, you have just as much right to be here as I do. What? That, that can't be right. I mean, you're a princess, and I'm just some, some... Are you not famous fashion model? I don't know if I'm exactly famous. I've not been able to... Not been a model for a very long. I'm just a loser. I asked Ayu. I'm sure she'll agree with me. Miss Aku has quite the fiery temper. I am unsure whether she is the best person to go for advice when one is beginning to doubt themselves. I concur. I doubt that Ayu thinks you are a loser, Alice. But even if she does, I do not. You are one of Hiroki's companions, after all. He would not have welcomed you into, this, into his heart if he did not have some goodness in you. That is proof enough to me that you are worthy of sitting here. Are you sure? Alice looks at Stefania shyly, her fingers twin together. I mean, I did kidnap you. I would understand if you resented me. I feel like you should resent me. Actually, I'm surprised you even let me into the palace. It is true enough, yes, that you caused me some uh, discomfort. Just some, huh? Stefania sure is a downplaying this. It might have told Elise that things would be alright, but I don't think... Even I believe things will go quite this smoothly. Stefania is more forgiving than I've been giving her credit for. She is some sort of a goddess. But the past is the, in the past. I don't wish to dwell upon it needlessly. Not when it will only cause discomfort. If Hiroki can put what you did behind him, then I can too. I don't hold any grudges. Then what? That will accomplish nothing to save sorry things between us. And I don't want that. If Hiroki was willing to take a chance on you, then I am too. I trust the judgment without question. Any friends of his 
of his is a friend of mine. Oh, um, at least face which is was already red goes even redder. She did dip her head. Her whole body quivering and mutters. That's um too kind of you. Thank you, um, your highness. Oh, you don't you don't need to be so formal. Just just Stefania is fine. Are you sure? Quite sure. I don't really like being addressed by my title. It makes me feel like I'm being singled out. I'd much rather live as an ordinary girl, even if my home is less than ordinary. <laughs> I would understand that dining in a palace might be intimidating, but try not to let it bother you. There is nothing remarkable about me living in such luxury. I didn't do anything to achieve all this. It was handed to me at birth, all, all because of my parents. In fact, I think you're much, much more impressive than I am. But why? What? But why? Because you're a model, you've achieved a degree of renown, even though you've been trying to downplay it through nothing other than your hard work. I think this is much rather more incredible than anything I've ever done. Just look at this. Stefania reaches into the her pocket that retrieves something. It takes me moments to, to realize what that something is. It's pretty crumpled, but once Stefania unfurls it, I'm left with no doubts as to what she's clutching. It's a magazine, the very first magazine that Alice ever was featured on. Alice is wearing a ruffled, ornate dress with frilly sleeves and a frilly bro. Her long eyes, legs are encased in sheer black stockings. Her outfit is intricate. Without being an ostentatious, ostentatious it is dead decided and elegantly. Alice's dreamy, faraway expression, meanwhile, only serves to add to the outfit's otherworldly appeal. She looks just as amazing as I can recall. At least it really is pretty. Wah, 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 But the real Alice has begun to look rather awkward. Slowly her cheeks flood scarlet like a piece of broiled octopus. Then with a shy squeak, she says, Why do you have that? Should I not have it? I thought you might feel awkward in my company given our last meeting went so very poorly. So I thought having this around might help help break the ice. I hope that bringing up your career will soothe the nerves. But apparently not. You're wasting your breath there. I'm afraid. Alice always gets worked up. Whenever anybody talks about her accomplishments, it's almost like she's allergic to com compliments. Yeah, Alice's always been a bit awkward. She doesn't really like talking about herself, though I have no idea why. She really, really is cute. She is passably cute. I wouldn't necessarily call her really, really cute, though. You're being too eff effusive. Besides, nobody is as cute as me. Oh, right. My, my mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry, Caillou. It's true. As far as sucking me go, you're definitely the most adorable. But at least it's cute, too. I concur. I also think she is rather charming. I just wish that she would... Have more confidence in herself. What? Uh, no, um, you guys are all being much too nice to me. If you keep saying sweet things, I my heart will explode. You don't have to be so kind. At least blows profusely her whole face on fire. But this is as it turns out, it's a mistake. She bows deeply. She face plants or forehead plants against the table. Ow! 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 At least jerks away from the table sharply, tearing beatings in her eyes. Her forehead smack against the man Mahogany pretty hard. Will that leave a bruise? She shifts backwards, raising one hand to her forehead. And then... Oh no! Disaster strikes! Oh boy, she got bruises on her forehead. Elise flailing right hand catches the end of her spoon, which is what's lying in innocuously in her bowl of soup. The spoon goes flying upwards, catapulting into the air by the force of Elise's hand. The spoon arcs upwards, scattering droplets of scalding soup everywhere. Soup gets all over the tablecloth, all over the floor, and all over Elise. Well, of course it does. 
I can't say I expected much else, really. Not after Elise started bowling like that. Her face had already been sealed. Really though. Oh no. Made such a mess, and after you were so nice to me too, Stefania. I'm so sorry. I really am an idiot. At least might be the clumsiest succubus I've ever met. Very clumsy, man. Later that night. All right, everyone. We're going to stop right here. And that is the end of episode one. So I'll see you guys in the next episodes coming this whole week. And don't forget to join my Discord server and check out my social media as well. And I am out.